Hello my people, how are you? I hope that you're fine. Here is your girl Terry again. Um, hoping you're well wherever you are. Today I just want to talk shortly about constructive criticism. I have noticed that in this social media era, guys are very, very sensitive. Sensitive to an extent that we don't even notice who loves us and who doesn't. Do you know that there's a difference between uh, envy in criticism and jealousy in criticism? Envy, I mean, envious criticism can both be constructive but also mocking. A person who criticizes someone on the basis of envy uh, is a person who would love to be like the person she or he is criticizing or would love the person he or she is criticizing to uh, you know, to reduce the gear, like reduce the speed, or to get down to their level, or to share with them, okay? There is also uh, honest, honest criticis- uh, criticizers, like ho- somebody who is criticizing you honestly. That could be maybe your mother. You know how our mothers criticize us, yeah? Um, with some kind of truth and honesty in it. Your mother maybe is criticizing your dressing because they feel like you represent them. So how you dress represents them. And uh, when somebody, when somebody or a friend of theirs look at you, they don't see you, but they see them as your mother, you know? So when a mother is criticizing you, um, she is criticizing you out of concern, completely out of concern. So when your mother tells you, remove that dress, I don't like the, you know, you are from my house and uh, anybody who lives under my roof should not dress like you're dressing when going out, whatever. Then they only mean that uh, you you carry their name within you or on you or on your image. You're representing a whole lot of people, uh, which is family and includes her. And so if you're not going to an event in that you're dressing, uh, which concerns family or uh, has nothing to do with family then it's okay but when you're going to an event or you're within the proximity of the family and you dress the way your mother doesn't like you to dress then you know what you have to understand that is honesty you have to respect that your sister can also criticize you in that manner but sisters you know they are almost our age mates or your age mates and so they could also criticize you in a positive manner but on an envy basis. Maybe they'd like you to give up that dress for them. They'd like you to give up that job for them. They'd like you to share with them or something like that. With friends, we also have to be careful, but not so negative. Because we have friends, of course, friends who are frenemies, who lie in your face that they're your friends, but behind your back, they're backstabbing you. These are the kinds of friends that most of us actually love. The friends who don't tell us the truth. And this is where the problem begins. When you're only good with uh, friends who give you only positive criticism, like every, every criticism is actually positive, should be positive. But if you're only comfortable with friends that give you compliments, with friends that um, are always smiling at you, with friends that can, just can't tell you when you're wrong, then uh, you are killing yourself slowly. Good friends tell it to you directly, but in a polite manner. A good friend won't let you go like embarrass yourself. Me, I wouldn't let you as my friend go embarrass yourself. So you have these friends who, you know, you know, maybe you're going to a club. In a club, you're supposed to dress as if you're going to a club. Like, 
that's where you are allowed to to wear those mini skirts and wear uh, like uh, crop tops, tumbo cuts. That's where you can wear all those sexy things that you those fantasy stuff. Those are club stuff. And then you, because you are a godly child, you come from a home where people just hallelujah, hallelujah. But you want to, you're a party girl, but your background is more of, uh, you know, you want to go out with these people. You want to go out to the group of friends, but you don't want to dress according to the event. Dress appropriately in, you know, f- dress to the occasion. You don't want to dress to the occasion. You want To go enjoy, you want to join the troupe, but you don't want to match their outfits. You feel like you are their friend, but you are not of of their moral standards. So then maybe you go wear a suit or you wear an office wear, you know, office outfit or you go wear a church outfit and you don't want, you just don't want your friends or your friends are afraid of telling you, hey, a club, in a club we go at night, nobody's going to see you. Everybody who's going to a club are people who know that clubs are for this. Um, forget about what we'll say about you. If you don't want to go, just stay home. If you feel like you want to go, but you can't dress, um, you want to go, but you can't dress to the occasion, then just stay home. Then when they tell you that when your friend tells you, okay, sweetie, we love you so much, but we wouldn't love to work with you in that attire. If you can't dress to the occasion, if you can't match our outfits, then please just stay home. We'll come back like in five hours and then we can continue from there. Then you feel like you're hated, you're bad, they are, uh, you know, they are uh, like hiding something away from you. Yet it's just a direct thing that you should actually, actually take the way it is. So that becomes a problem, but not on their side because they were truthful to you. They were honest with you. Uh, you, you take it as if they hate you, they don't want you, they are hiding something away from you. You feel like now those friends of yours are friends on their own and don't want to include you, like they're excluding you in some spaces. That's a problem. And when they take you with them, when they just let you be the way you want to be, then they take you with them to the club and then people start, other people get shocked at the sight of you and uh, start thinking like, why are these are these girls letting their friend look like an idiot? Then how do you want to do you want to put the blame on them? Because of course they'll be giving these people who are giving them these kind of eyes or, or winks with question marks, the eyes of return. Like you know what we told her, or if we tell her she's gonna be mad. So you look like a fool there. Then you start feeling again like, ah, oh, you don't belong. These guys lied to you. You know, you're not welcomed here. These are the kind of uh, um, situations that like give this uh, word or this phrase f- freni- frenemy some kind of power that it shouldn't even have. You notice you're not right and then you, do, don't want to, you just don't want to agree to it. Don't want to own up. I normally say on social media, in my platforms, on my platforms, that I grew up with uh, a kind of a motto that I got from my elders back in the village, which goes like in Luo, Ngamoheri Emakweri, which means he who loves you corrects you. The only person who can correct you and tell you to, to your face, the only person who can dare tell you to your face without hiding it, like to your face, with a smile is a person who loves you. A person who loves you can never let you mess up. A person who loves you can never let you embarrass yourself. She'd rather let you feel embarrassed in their eyes. I mean, when you are the two of you, but not in a crowd or in public. But this is a problem because with social media generation now, you you see a friend of yours behaving in a manner that is not to her image or to her goals in life. And you know very well, this, my girl wants this and this and this in life. And this um, direction that she's taking is messing her, her focus. Then you look for her privately like it's supposed to be, maybe uh, on phone or, uh, or on a chat or inbox DM, tell her my sister 
this and this and this you're doing wrong. Please, nobody's going to tell you this. But you know, I am your friend. I have never hurt you. Uh, you can trust me. And I'm telling you this to your eye or telling you directly. It's not nice. Then immediately you, you've been like holding things in your heart. You feel like this is the opportunity to tell her how she hates you. Then you go trolling her. You go turning her upside down. You go, you just break a friendship that was really truthful. The only true friendship you actually have, you, you spoil it. You kill it just because you can't handle constructive truthful, honest criticism. You don't even remember that this person is a person who's never harmed me, has never hurt me. Even if you look at the length of your relationship, how long you've been together, she's never hurt you. Yeah? And then now, with this one event, one thing, one moment of criticism, after a million moments of uh, compliments, you are now mad because you're so used to compliments. You're so used to compliments that you can't handle her. You can't imagine her. You can't allow her to once in a while just also tell you that you're wrong. So then you create an enmity there and that is how friendship are killed. And once you've killed these honest friendships and you think that those who only give you the positive side, only those who only put smiles on your face all the time, are the ones who are real. Then you start being lonely. Slowly, slowly you realize you don't have a friend. So whose problem is it? Again, it's only yours. If you're a good person, you'd not overreact. Like if you're a friend whom you've only, always only gotten nice words from on a day in which you've not even like quarreled or crossed other people, uh, uh, each and I mean, or even crossed one another's uh, roads, not even stepped on each other's feet. She just comes and tells you, hey, uh, you know this, I want to tell you this and this. I've been wanting to tell you this for a long time, but you're doing this and this wrong. Then please, you better just maybe drop the phone on her or, uh, you know, listen and then let her be. Just, just go and then sleep over it for two days. Normally two days, three days is enough for you to know whether it was a honest criticism, it was real or it was a lie. But overreacting, like hitting back and starting to abuse and taking everything that was in your heart. Maybe she was your good friend, but you are not her good friend. Oh, can only hurt you. So you have to be keen on that. Every one of us in this life, each and every one of us, even the president, even the billionaire or who, we are not perfect. No one is perfect in this world. The only person, who is, the only person that is perfect is God. Everyone must live with positivity and negativity. Everyone must endure love and hate. Everybody must endure, must experience. Everybody must experience criticism and, compl and compliments. So there's no way you can grow. There's no way you can balance if you don't have a left hand and a right hand or a right feet and a left feet. You can't. You have to have both. Left and right. Hate and love. Criticism and compliment. Um, you have to have this. So if you only want to build yourself on the love side, then mm, 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 it's your problem again. So what I'm telling you is uh, everybody gets criticized. Everyone. Even that friend of yours who is uh, giving you that criticism is, uh, goes through, I mean, gets it. That is where they are grown. And even if you see successful people, don't think that you can be successful without having those blue days, those days that when you feel less, those days when you feel you have failed, those, those days when somebody is confirming to you that, you know what, <laughs> you are right in your senses. Like, what you're thinking about yourself, this blue day is blue. It's not white, it's blue. So, and that is the only way to grow. That's the only way to balance your spirit and to be who. So you better just learn, if you are this kind of person who is uh, very sensitive to, to, to negativity or to, uh, no, negativity is bad, but very sensitive to criticism, let me just say that, or very sensitive to, it's sensitive to non-compliments, or very sensitive to, you know, to failure, yeah? Then you can't grow. You may assume that you're growing, but you are just heading towards a very suicidal uh, point in life. So, uh, learn to 
take in, I mean, listen, learn to listen. Let's learn all of us, even me, to listen. Once you've listened, give it time. Give it time. Even if you're boiling to the boiling point. Me, what I normally do, I'll just share with you this secret of mine with you. When I'm boiling to boiling point, even those people who know me on Facebook, even when I'm abused or uh, uh, whatever is done to me because I experience uh, uh, like bullying and abuse and uh, bad mouthing on social media all the time, but I never react immediately. I give it two days, two or three days or a week, and then I bring out my video too. I, that is, you know. But these days that I normally give between after I've been bullied, abused, or trolled, or uh, burnt alive, it's always to see whether really um, they were wrong with their words or there's really something that I've done wrong that needs to be corrected. So if you sleep over it within a few days, you notice, you'll know, you'll know whether these guys were real with you or they just want to bring you down or they're just creating a hate group on you or they're loyal. To, you know, you'll know, you'll know what's up. If you feel guilty, then you'll realize that uh, you'll notice what's wrong within you. If you listen properly, you will uh, check on yourself and see if it's uh, the thing that they, they said or she or he said that you did wrong. You will look at it and see if you really did wrong. If you did wrong, you'll realize that, uh, not realize, but uh, you'll find yourself correcting it. Yeah. Once you correct it and you go back, to that thing you were doing that they were seeing that wrong in and you do it right you have used that correction you've used that criticism you've used their talk to correct yourself then you'll notice that nobody will even bother you nobody will even comment about anything wrong not nobody just simply correct it it might be maybe your hair some people may tell you about your eyebrows someone may tell you about your dressing somebody the way you talk somebody the way you react to your your followers you know it's just constructive normally criticism is not all bad it can touch the wrong part of the heart but just give it time and if you're that person whose blood boils so fast that you just can't give it that day just can't sleep over it then i'm sorry for those who do, who i'm going to hurt now but just take a glass of wine take a glass of wine and sleep or take a shot take a shot take a shot and go to bed and sleep at least just anything that would, have, would make you would cool you down it would make you not overreact not react as fast anything that could just make you sleep over it that's all because it's always true and it's a reality really that the next day always feels otherwise feels better the next day feels different after a nap you just feel different you'll always feel different. If your mind still insists these people are wrong, then you know you're, they're wrong. If your mind starts to question, then you know, ah, somehow they were right. But overreacting to your defense at all the time, very quickly, is not the right thing to do in this life. It's not even healthy to your own life. Accept criticism. Learn to, you know what, to like... Uh, we say dar or in the dar or like uh, make good choices like look into take time and separate like separate as if you're looking for dirt and weeds of your life and check who are my friends not just for my friends Pe people haters and lovers they're all for me the same they're just okay they're, because for me a hater is just as as uh, as uh, as important as a lover why am I saying this? Because haters, like us people who are on YouTube, yeah? People who love us, they don't even bother watching our videos. They just have it there in their minds that they love you and that's it. So even if you share with them a video to watch, they don't even notice that they, you need that watch minute of theirs. You just, you need their eyes there. You need that click. They don't notice that. They just feel, ah, this is my friend. Ah, she, she'll assume I've watched and that. They don't, they don't grow you at all. Your friends, your real, real friends, those ones that are real could be the ones that are actually fake. Yeah? Because they feel you love them. You feel you know that they love you. And so they don't have to bother 
supporting you. But a hater is the one who puts that notification. They will come and watch the first people and then they give you a thumbs down. They make sure they click that thumbs down. When the people who actually like your video, who, who, who pretend or act like they like that video that you've posted, they won't even bother clicking on that thumbs up. Yet you need it. You need it for evaluation. That is how YouTube works, for example. These buttons are important. These commentaries are very important. But you know what? Your friend won't care. They won't care. So how again do you want to get rid of haters, yet they're the ones who are actually using those buttons. And the more those thumbs down buttons you have, the more you know how important and how, uh, how much, how, how larger uh, uh, an audience you have, how many people you're reaching, and how many souls you're touching. Because those touched souls, those who feel guilty, those who feel like they've been pierced in the heart, they're the ones who put those thumbs down. They're the ones who really watch to the end. So we just have to learn to embrace our haters. Yeah? We, they are called, I don't like that word, but it's now a norm. It's now like a, a household word for, for those ones. But really, I would tell you that the ones who love you, they have the notification bell on. You post and even before, even before they watch it, they've already put that thumbs down. And you know they can't put the thumbs down before they click on that video, even if they're not watching it. So that's already supporting you. You notice that? So we people should just know that the more souls the, the, the more souls you touch, whether it's negative or positive in this world, the good and impact you leave. So don't just build on, on negativity. Don't see everything negative. Don't see that everybody hates you. Those who hate you, like I've said, are the ones who listen to you. So stay cool. I assure you today that I hate no one. I, do, I hate no one. People imagine, because of my hard work and uh, this, the, 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 the effort that I put in what I do, the urge to be better every day, some people just take it negatively. Yet, they don't realize that I am actually igniting some fire in them to also do better. Those who watch my videos, then they feel like they also have to go and do such videos. Those who listen to the songs that I present, and then they, re they, they feel like they also have to get such songs. Those who watch my editing skills, and they feel like they also have to have their videos done that way. You bless me. Because my work is touching your heart. My work is igniting a fire in you. You may think you're competing me, but... You are the reason why Terry shines every day. You are the reason. So I really thank you. Be positive. Somebody's knocking at my door. Yeah, post. A package just arrived. So I think I'm done with that. I'm done with that uh, talk. May God bless you. Until next time. Bye. Brown chocolates.